Now we'll take a look at the vitamin D. So I know in the previous um, skin biology video that I did earlier in the week, a lot of people were sort of quite concerned about how little it takes being in the sun un um, unprotected by sunscreen to actually get enough vitamin D. So I want to clarify on that, that there is a lot of different factors that come into it. So vitamin D, we'll st I'll come into it later, but vitamin D um, is called the sunshine vitamin. So the most, the, uh, the most highest way of getting vitamin D is through the sun. So there are some food sources um, that are quite rich in vitamin D. It's only a handful of food though, and it's just a significant amount. It's not quite your full daily amount that you would need. Those foods would be cod liver oil, swordfish, salmon, sardines, tin tuna, beef liver, and egg yolks. Now you would need to be eating an awful lot of those foods to be getting a sufficient amount um, or your full recommended daily dose of vitamin D. So it's a unique vitamin, sorry I'm going to say vitamin, vitamin, my whole Irish thing, I'll stick with vitamin because that's how I grew up. So it's a unique vitamin that most people don't get enough of. Now half of the Australian population have a marginal line of a vitamin D deficiency. So Ireland and UK are then worse because they obviously don't get near as much sunshine. But it's quite unusual for Australia being such a super sunshine country to have such high numbers with people with low um, vitamin D or with deficiencies in vitamin D. So because sunlight is the major source of vitamin D, um, you actually get 90% of your vitamin D from the sun. So because a lot of people are working indoors and because the sun is so harsh and you burn so easily, a lot of people tend to avoid the sun. So I know when I first came to Australia, being Irish was like, sit out in the sun, you know, strip off, let's get a tan. And then suddenly a couple of bad sunburns made me realize, okay, I need to sit in the shade. Where is the shade? The sun is just way too hot. So the vitamin D is made from cholesterol in skin. Um, when it's exposed to the sun. So it's essential for um, optimal health. So to have the right amount of vitamin D can keep your body really ticking along and keep you at an optimum health. Um, another really important um, aspect of vitamin D is it instructs your gut to absorb calcium and phosphorus. And they're two really important minerals for healthy bones. Low levels are linked to osteoporosis, cancer, depression, muscle weakness and even death. So a bad enough vitamin D deficiency over a duration of time can cause a lot of damage to the body and can lead to death. So that just shows you how important and how essential vitamin D is for each and every one of us. Now midday, like I said in the previous video, is the strongest, the sun at its strongest. But it is the qu quickest and best way of getting your sufficient amount of vitamin D from the sun. However, because it's so damaging to your skin cells, and your immunity, like I explained in the previous video, there's a really, really hard way of finding the correct balance of not having too much sun and causing damage to the skin, but getting enough sun to give you enough vitamin D for the day. So I said in my skin biology video, which I can't find the quote now, oh, sorry, the link to where um, I got this stat from, but it was actually a, um, it was someone who had come into my stepdaughter's school and was educating them about the sun. And she had given the updated um, facts on the sun that to get enough vitamin D in your day would be to expose the palm of your hand into direct sun. Now this is talking about summer sun, like midday, 
summer sun in Australia. So these times will vary throughout the year and the time of day. Um, to expose the palm of your hand for something like two to five minutes. So that just goes to show you how strong our sun is in Australia and how damaging it could be if you were to expose all of your skin to the sun. So the other way is to find, to sort of to find a balance of, you know, what's right and what's not wrong. It would depend on the time of year, your location, the time of day and your skin type. So sun sense, midday, you would not go out in it uncovered. Even sunscreen would not be enough to protect from the damaging rays of the Australian sun in midday. You would need to have a hat, you would need to have sunscreen, protective clothing to prevent any damage to your skin. Now, other skin types could get away with being in the sun for maybe 10-15 minutes before needing to put on sunscreen. So it's just finding that balance of knowing what your Fitzpatrick skin type is, so how quick it takes for you to have redness on the skin when you go in the sun. So some people may only need one to two minutes walking around in the sun, depending how pale you are. Others could do five to 10 minutes walking around, no um, sun protection on just to get that vitamin D level up and then you could apply your sunscreen. So we'll talk about sunscreen in the next video.